right, let's remain standing for just a moment. And I mean, hey, hey, how many of y'all are glad just to be alive tonight? I mean, you're here, you're happening, and uh, man, just uh, Trevor and all them, the way they led us in worship tonight, the Spirit of God that's here, and and uh, so we're, we're gonna we're gonna continue to focus. Some of y'all were here Sunday morning, some not, and we're gonna focus on what we bow down to begins to shape our reality. What we bow down to begins to shape our reality. And here's the good news. God has already placed his truth in your life if you're a believer. My brother Bill Pollard, when you came up out of baptismal waters, guess what? You are fully, you are fully fit for heaven now. Isn't that amazing? It's crazy. And so I, I'm not going to torture you anymore. I'm tired of the church torturing God's children. And for years we've been teaching it's not right. We don't have to go get anything. It's already been given by Christ. He doesn't tell us to go get it. You know, Pastor Dwayne, how many, how many sermons we preach, how many Disciple Now weekends have we had, and we tell them we need to go make ourselves better. But God said, be in me. And then stand when it's time to stand. How many of y'all are excited and you know beyond a shadow of doubt, when you stand with God, God will stand up in you. We're going to see that tonight, all right? He, he will. So before I get to preaching, we better have a prayer. What do you think? Lord, I thank you so much for every living, beautiful human being that's in this place tonight. And Lord, whether they're yet to receive Christ or have already received Christ, you made them. And you love them. And you have designed them to be connected to heaven. And so, Lord, tonight as we teach, I pray that we will be ready to... Uh, embrace who we are in Christ and uh, then when we get tested that we'll stand and we'll stand firm in the things you've given us Lord so Lord I thank you for ancient examples that live in this present day so uh, may we learn from your word tonight in the name of Jesus amen amen y'all may be seated it's gonna be amazing tonight go with me to Daniel chapter 3 remember we've been in this sermon series God's what God's what where's he got you how long has he got you? What if you act up and do stupid stuff? Good, I just wanted you all to see that. Now, that doesn't mean that we just continue to dismiss the God's Word in our life, but it means this. The more we live in God's Word, the more we stay with God's Word, the more the results of God's Word are going to pour out of our lives. The more that we see the results of God's Word pouring out of our lives, the more we live a full and what? Abundant life. How I many of y'all realize that God has remade you to live? And so we got, we, got, we got Daniel here. He's in a little bit different setting. He knows the law of God. He knows that he's a part of the promise of God. And guess what he did? I want to bring this up. He shared that with his friends. Y'all remember when we left old Daniel? Remember, he's got his buddy Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, okay? The, their renames, okay? And so in their renames, guess what? They were unwilling, Garrett, to live up to what the world named them. They were unwilling, you ready, Dwayne, to live up to what the king had named them. Now, now I, I want you to think about this for a minute. Everybody's got an idea of what it means to follow God except those who follow God. Why do we bow down? Cower to and really accept what the world says about us. We've allowed politics to marginalize the, the, those of God. We've allowed people to create image that we're stupid and somewhat living less lives than, than those who are living these king-oriented gold statue lives. But you know what? Guess who allowed that to happen? Mr. Briggs, who do you think allowed that to happen? We did. We stayed silent when we stood, should have stood up. Now run that by yourself. How many times should you have stood up when you remained silent? Now, I'm not talking about being cocky. I'm not talking about being demanding. I'm talking about just doing the right thing at the right time in the right place and just being right. So we're going to take up, here's what's happened. King Nebuchadnezzar, if they had had Twitter... Back in Daniel's day, King Nebuchadnezzar would have been on it. Kind of sound familiar? 
He liked to declare and to decree as most political leaders do. Make sense? How many of y'all have noticed that we've heard, now read my lips, we heard that from George Bush Sr., we heard from Obama constantly, let me be clear, and the reason he had to say that, he never was. And then we, now we got from Donald, he's always saying this is going to be the best, the biggest. We've had, hadn't you all experienced the best 10 months of your life? <laughs> See what it says, now was, here's what I'm trying to show you. Now listen, I'm not picking on anybody politically. All politicians are the same, limited. So if you think we're going to find life being a Republican, Lord, they can't even find a tax deduction. Life doesn't even enter them. It, it, Democrats, Republicans, it, that's, that is not what life's about. But unfortunately, a lot of us have bowed down to that. And we've allowed that to define who we are instead of being who we are. You and I are followers of who? Jesus, the Most High God. How many of y'all are a follower of the Most High God? Come on, I'm going to preach a little bit tonight. I'm going to wake you up in the middle of the week. You and I are followers of the Most High God. Because that's true, Sam, what is possible in your life? That's not a rhetorical question. What do you think is possible in your life because you are a follower of Jesus Christ? There you go. That's exactly right. You spoke that like you were pastor's son or something that you knew, knew the answer. You've been to Sunday school. Check this out. Sam said, Sam said this. Because it is true that the Lord Jesus Christ has totally recreated our lives. How many of y'all glad to know you live in a totally recreated life? If you don't mind, look at somebody and say, I've been forgiven. I mean, if you have, I've been forgiven. Now, if you have been forgiven, does that change everything how you live? I'm going somewhere with this. Because we kind of take grace like, okay, I've been forgiven of my sins. But, oh, I'm so tired of hearing of all this con job. Oh, the big bad world out there. It's so tough. And there's a mean devil out there. And he's going to get all of us little Christians. And we need to run and hide because our faith is not powerful enough for the big dominant world. If you believe that, you're not believing what the Bible said. The Bible said your enemy's been defeated. The Bible said at the cross, all victory was won. God has said, I have put in you my power, and if you stand firm, it will run. In fact, he only tells us one thing to do when the devil shows up out. Guess what it is? Lord, I got friends, they get tobacco sprayers full of anointing oil and squirt it on evil, and they go through all this gyration. You know what the Bible said to do with evil? Resist. That's it. No, you ain't got to do all that gyration. You know why we do all that? We're trying to help God. Guess what God needs? How many of y'all glad to know he's God because he doesn't need any help? <laughs> How many of y'all need some help? Woo, I do. Elizabeth helps me all the time. She knows I need help. Make sense? My kids, help. everybody tries to help me. But God says I need no help because I am God. Now check this out. King Nebuchadnezzar, he's created a God. Isn't that amazing? Aren't you all glad we don't create gods anymore? I'm, I'm saying that real facetiously. Well, let me tell you what he's done. I've got to put these clippets on there also. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, guess what he does? He builds him a gold statue whose height was 60 cubits and its breadth was 6 cubits. He set it up in the plain of Duran in the province of Babylon. Now, I'm going to note some things to you so you're going to see how familiar things are. Does anybody know where the ancient world of Babylon is located today? Any of y'all ever heard of a country called Iraq? Iraq is ancient Babylon. Now, isn't it amazing to you all that here I am in the 21st century, you know, we're kind of in the, in the front end of the 21st century, Pete, and I'm reading several millennials ago, and in the middle of, of Babylon, many millennials ago, there was a king named Nebuchadnezzar who set up a god and said this about the god. At the sound of all the music, the trumpet, the lyre, the trion, and all of these musical instruments, everyone should bow down to this god. And if they don't bow down to this god, I will throw them in a fiery furnace. Hmm. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound current? Does that sound current like 
a couple or at least a millennial ago, there was another group that made up their own God and their own way God would function. And they too say, if you don't convert to our way and follow our God exactly the way we say to follow our God, and if you don't follow our made-up laws and interpretation about our God, what are we going to do to you? We're going to kill you. And the same Nebuchadnezzar statue in Babylon is now the same concept where we just ran a bunch of these Nebuchadnezzar-type folks out of there in the last 10 months. Has anything changed? So here's what I want you to see. You always have to force people to follow a false God. You always have to force people to follow a what? Pretty interesting, isn't it now? Ain't nothing changed. Here we are in Babylon, old King Nebuchadnezzar. You don't follow the God I've created, death becomes you. What does Islam say? If you ever read the Quran, I have read the Quran. The Quran says this. If you're unwilling to convert to the one true God, Allah, then your life must be taken away from you. That's what the text says. Now, luckily, we don't have a lot of good Muslims. They're about like Christians. We don't believe what our book says. Thank God they don't believe what theirs says either. But there's a few of them that do. The dedicated ones say we must rid the world of the what? Infidel. And who's the infidel? Now, here's what I love about the Muslims. Guess what the Muslims are going to do? Unite the Christians. You see, the Christians have been fragmented for centuries. We're worried about do we have a piano or not have a piano? Do we pray on our knees or standing up? Do we use the King James Bible or NIV Bible? Are we Baptist or Church of Christ or non-denomination? Do we speak in tongues or not speak in tongues? Do we speak in tongues sideways or backwards? Do we only do it in worship or not do it in worship? We have been occupying ourselves for 100 years with critical non-issues. And so guess who unites us? Well, God. The Muslims are united too. You know what? They don't care if we're black Christians or white Christians or green Christians or charismatic Christians or non-charismatic Christians or, or Calvinists or non-Calvinists. They're going to kill us all. They have united us. Now, I wonder what would happen if we actually united and stood. That, that kind of that united we stand, does that bring back a theoretical concept? There was a nation a long time ago, it was called the United States of America. And guess what it believed in? United. Now what does it believe in? Diversity. You don't hear anybody talking about what does it mean to be united. You hear all these talk, people talking about what does it mean to be diverse. Well, what does it mean to be united? So you had what you had a group of people that were united with King Babylon. It was all his people. Guess what? There were a large majority that were united to doing what, Al? Bowing down and doing exactly what the king said. How many of y'all know a lot of people they just gonna bow down and do what the king says? I bet y'all did. How many of y'all did that when you were teenagers? Any of y'all ever throw this line? I bet you'll do it. Don't do it. <laughs> y'all ever? Throw this line at your parents. They told you you couldn't go somewhere. You couldn't go do something. And what was your response? Everybody's doing it. How many of y'all ever did it and everybody's doing it? Boy, I did that more than once. My dad's a lawyer, so I had to plead my case of why I need to go do what I want to do. And I said, Dad, everybody's doing it. And he would always have a rebuttal. Guess what his rebuttal was? You ain't everybody. He'd actually use inappropriate grammar to tell me this. <laughs> you ain't everybody. Blake, I think you heard that a couple times, didn't you? You had a graduation party you heard that on. Huh? No, it wasn't Clacy. That's Blake. <laughs> Clacy has a long, thick book. You have a narrow book, so I can remember yours. See, so check, check his out. Yeah, yeah, everybody, huh? Sam, you ever done that to your father? You told him everybody's doing it. What did he say? You're not everybody. Hold on, he told you a truth. Guess what? How many of you know that every one of us in this room that are a part of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're no longer a part of everybody? We're part of heaven. That's pretty cool, isn't it? We hope that little boy one day gets what he's going to be part of. 
heaven. Tony, you're a part of what? No matter what's going on, you're a part of heaven. No matter what happens to us, we're a part of Claypool, we can even be a surveyor and end up where? In heaven. I mean, it's amazing. See what I'm saying? We are connected to heaven. Now, I want you to follow this because if we ever did this to become united. Now, listen, here's what I'm proposing to you. I think some of our united understanding has slipped away. What do you all think? Am I onto something or not onto something? Help me. What is this? I wish we could at least just agree that we need to respect each other as human beings. Wouldn't that be a good thing? And maybe if we quit labeling each other and started listening to one another, we would have come a long, long way. Now, who did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego listen to? They listened to God. They listened to the law of God. They listened to the things of God. They honored the things of God. Now, we know that this started when? I'm going to get on my high horse before I get down here. Guess, guess when it started? Remember we had Daniel. Daniel was up against the king. They take him captive in Babylon. They're going to teach him the ways of the Babylonians. They're going to give him the king's food. And what, is, what does Daniel decide to do? Remember he tells the eunuch, hey, listen, we need to eat our diet. It honors our God. It honors our faith. This is who we are. This is where we stand. Now, what was the automatic assumption? The eunuch said, oh, if you all do that, you'll be less than the king's people. Which is the automatic assumption from a lot of people, some of you in this room, you think, man, if I give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to have a less of a life than if I just do it everybody else's way. What's the truth? Is there a full and abundant life outside Jesus Christ? Y'all talk to me. It's Wednesday night. We can talk. What do you think? How many of y'all have experimented? See if you could go find one. Well, what did you find? How many of y'all have ever had this? If I just get enough of what I think is going to bless me, or Nick, they could be wired. I'll go ahead and bring you into my sinful thinking too because you have the same pattern. If a little bit of it works, then what? A lot of it ought to just work that much more. How many of y'all have that, that mindset? Yes, we're called addicts. <laughs> Make sense? If one worked, then ten or what? Really work. So we, th we think there's something in this world that if we just do it enough, we'll have a full and abundant life. Now, that's not what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego submitted to, bowed down to. They bowed down to the ways of the Lord. They did it when they were young, P. And so when they did it when they were young, guess what? They never removed themselves from doing it. Now, parents, I'm going to talk to you. What's an important thing for you all to do? I still have young Dalton sitting here with us tonight, Wednesday night worship. Thanks for being here, Dalton. Dalton, tell them what happened to you Sunday morning. What did you do? I got baptized. Let me tell you what Dalton did, too. I love it. His mama told, told Elizabeth that he had a calendar. We had 10 days out, didn't we? And what did you do on that calendar? He marked them off, and he waited to the Sunday that he was going to be baptized. What if all of us begin to look forward to Sunday like that? This is the Sunday I'm going to stand up for God. This is the Sunday I'm going to hear what God's got to teach me. This is the power that I'm going to receive and stand in, okay? Now watch. Al, the Bible teaches us a lot about standing, doesn't it? Stand. Stand on a promise. It says that. Stand firm. How many times does the Bible say stand firm? And what do we do want to do? Stand soft. We want to dance. How many of y'all want to dance? We want like a little bit over here, a little bit over there. How many of y'all get to squirming when the truth's getting ready to be revealed? How many, watch it, I love Baptist churches. I do. It's what I grew up in. I, they tickle me to death, especially Baptist Sunday school classes. They'll bring out the truth of God's word like this. Well, now this is what the Bible says we should do. But now, this is why we do what we do. That's why we have an anemic church. We say that we know what the truth of God's word is, but we're going to choose to deny it and then get mad when there's not a blessing attached to our fallacy. Here's what I want. Now, a lot of y'all are great business people in here. How many of y'all have learned this? If you practice poor business practices, you'll go broke. How many of y'all have learned that? Please, you need, if you're in business, you need to learn that. 
Watch this. There's some things in your life. You'll have financial problems if you spend more than you make. Dave Ramsey's a good friend of mine. I mean, he's like just a friend of mine. I don't read all of his books, but he's a good friend of mine. He publishes too many books. I have a lot of friends that just publish too many books. And so I told Dave, I was doing a gig for him one day, and, I, and I'm laughing, and I'm laughing. I said, Dave, you've got to wake up every morning and just thank God for the stupidity of the United States of America. I said, you have become a multi-gazillionaire over one really hard, complex problem financially. You know what Dave Ramsey basically teaches? Do not spend more than you make. Now, I don't find that amazing because we have out of 425 leaders of the United States of America in both a Congress and a Senate and an executive level and a judicial level, we had, none of them have figured that out yet. That there's a great crisis when you do what? Live beyond what you've been assigned to. But let me tell you what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are unwilling. See, this is just, this is much more, more in more depth than Keith, just some three guys that didn't stand up to a statue. This is three guys that embodied in life what God said should be. And they were willing to die for what they believed in. How many of y'all are willing to die for what you believe in? I'm going to blow you away. You might as well be. You've already died. Hmm? Big Al, you died a long time ago. What do you think about that? Your daddy, God rest his great witness now. He baptized you, didn't he? Where'd you get baptized? Creek? Huh? Well, absolutely. Running water. You don't want that sand to run on down there. I told him we, we hold ours and pull the plug and run it on out. Here at Hillview, we recycle ours. It's on a whirlpool. Uh, okay, in the creek? So you, how old were you, young boy? Eight, okay. So you went under that water, right? What was that signifying? You're dead. It's over. What you used to be no longer exists. And what you will always be has been risen up. If we lived up to our baptism, how would we stand? Well, I don't know what we're scared of. Because what I am can never not be. Y'all follow me? Y'all give me that look like I just put you in the headlights. Because when you came up out of the baptismal waters, that is symbolic of what? God has made me to live for how long? Ever. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that the principles of God were better than the principles of the king. They'd already had that by the food operation. Now they're going to be put to the test. And guess what? How many of y'all have noticed there's always somebody there to rat you out? How many of y'all have ever ratted somebody? No, I'm not going to ask you that. I hated tattletales. My, my, uh, not my youngest sister, but my, my, that, the, let's see, not the youngest sister, the other sister. <laughs> She's still a big tattletale. She's been tattling all of her life. That's all she did, tattle, 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 tattle. She'd rat me out. She'd rat my sister out. If you could find my brother, she'd rat him out. She's like, rat people out. Why do people like to rat people out? Love to make them look better. But we got these Chaldeans, and guess what they're going to do? They're going to rat out these Jewish boys. Verse 8, therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. Sound familiar? Who's always getting in trouble in the political arena? The Jews. Why is it that throughout human history, in any societal, political, geo-economic conflict, whose fault is it always? The Jews. It's amazing. The Jews are amazing people. Wherever you put them, they prosper. Why is that? They are chosen, and the ones that practice their chosenness, not all of them practice their chosenness, Guess what they know how to do? Unite. It's amazing. They've been in slavery more than any other group of people on the face of the earth. And we can say about them, much like we can say about the Romans said about them, 
Among the Jews, we can find no beggar. Why is that? Because they understand the spiritual responsibility of taking care of one another. Now, what do we want to do? We got a lot more Chaldean in us. What do we like to do? We throw each other under the bus for our own significance. Any of y'all ever thrown somebody? No, you don't have to answer that. Here, let's do it this way. I bet you'll do it this way, though. How many of y'all have ever been thrown under the bus? Man, I got so many tread marks. You can read Firestone on my back. <laughs> it's his fault. It's his fault. It's his fault. You can get in, you get in ministry, man. It's your fault. Make sense? You ready? Chaldeans rat them out, and they said, oh, we're going to go see the king. We're going to go see the king. You boys are in trouble. We're going to get you. We'll see if your God holds up. They declared to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Man, I wish that could be said about us as believers. These people, O president, they will not succumb to your direction, for they do not serve your gods. Every day we're put to this test. Will you serve their gods? Or will you allow your life to be a witness of what it means to serve the Most High God? Trevor, but it was there today for you, wasn't it? Aren't you at the university? Is there anybody serving secular gods there today? And you're even at some sort of, some kind of, had at least a Christian name on it at one time, right? Belmont. I mean, it used to be Belmont Baptist College, and now it's Belmont University. Is there anybody there who serves other gods than Jesus? Yeah. Hey, even at Bowling Green Christian Academy, there's non-Christian people. <gasps> you know why? An institution cannot be saved, and we cannot hide ourselves in the brick and mortar. We have to submit ourselves to what? I remember here at Hillview one time, I got so tickled. We had, a, we had a few instrumentalists, and they were yet to be converted to Jesus Christ. This was in the early days of Hillview. So we didn't have any musicians, so I just went and got people that play instruments. And I had a couple of real holy people. I mean, they went crazy. I mean, holy people crack me up. Especially holy people who are being made holy on their ownness, not by Jesus. They said, Pastor Steve, there's people who, who, who play instruments in worship, and worship, and they don't know Jesus. I said, yeah, they might by listening to the words of the song called Witness. And I said, do you really think in Nashville that every musician in the studio that plays for a Christian artist is saved? I said, a lot of them go out and smoke a joint and come back in to do their next set. But I said, let me tell you how powerful God is. God is a God that is Lord over our sin. And he can use whoever to do great things. And you know what? And I do know some of those guys that, that they used to live outside of God's will. But because they started playing Christian music, started, because they started doing a couple of gigs, because they started singing in a church, they heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they ended up getting saved. What do you think about that? How I bet you got, hey. Did you ever play with some friends in California and they were playing, they were playing on a church stage, but they were yet to know who they were singing about? Spirits. Oh, they said spirits, didn't they? But then as they, some of them know what? When they heard the truth of God's word, eventually received the truth of God's word. Always telling the truth. I mean, Al's out there in California. You reckon there's any fruitcakes out there? Huh? They got as many as we got in Kentucky. Make sense? Yeah, we got people that don't stand up. Here's what it means to stand up. 
Well, they rat him out. The king gets furious. He's mad. He calls Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in. I want you to understand this. He told them this. I cannot believe I'm, I'm summarizing here. He said, I can't believe y'all won't bow down when the music's played. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm going to play the music, and if you bow down, everything will be all right. Now, these guys got belief. Who are they standing before? The king. Does anybody know the difference between a king and a president? Somebody help me. What's the difference? I know some of them don't know the difference, but I'm talking about from our perspective. What's the difference? Okay, presidents elected by the people, and what kind of power does the president have? Limited power. What kind of power does a king have? Total power over that particular region. Now, if another king next to him doesn't like him, then they have a king battle, and that's called a war, right? But a king in their nation has what? Total authority. Now, if you've noticed, the political structure has not changed much in the Middle East since then. In the Middle East today, like right now in Syria, we got a really bad problem because if we don't call them a king now, but they have the same kind of power, what are they called? Anybody know? In Syria, you have a what? A dictator. So yeah, you have a dictator, and they got total authority. You got dictators in the Middle East. Listen, you, people in America don't understand how most of the world lives. You take somebody, all these Berkeley people protesting, go do that to a king and see what your freedom of speech does. How long do you think you'd last? Boom! You think there's people in other countries who don't do anything all day long begging the king for some more money? Only in America. <clears throat> Only in America do we have a group of people who think they deserve something for doing nothing. That mentality only exists here in the world. Guess what everybody else knows? If we don't find food today, we don't eat. If we don't work today, we don't eat. If we don't walk five miles, we don't get any water today. That's real for billions of people. We're only 325 million people here on the globe. We all spend together. Jesus died for all of us, not some of us. So old Nebuchadnezzar, he's furious. Why? But why does that make him so mad? Anybody observe this? Why did he give him a second chance? Come on, y'all talk to me. I like when y'all talk. Why did he give him a second chance? He said if you didn't bow down, he's got evidence that didn't bow down. Why didn't he just immediately throw him in the fire, Pete? You think he liked him? Or do you think he feared him? I think he feared him. I think he's going... Who are these three nuts that they would de deface my declaration? What kind of men are these that have such faith that they can stand against the king? They're the kind of man that will upset a king to such a point that, that Gerald's, he'll heat the furnace seven times hotter than normal. Why would you heat a furnace seven times hotter than normal? Because let me just tell you, all regular heat will get you good enough. I speak from study on that. Just regular temperature will get you melted. But he's done what? Now let me show you what happens. Kings get mad and when they get furious, they lose their mind and they lose their logic. He heated the furnace to such a temperature. Isn't that amazing? His anger's boiling and it's coming out in his actions. He's living by anger and Shadrach, Meshach are going to enter the, enter the furnace by faith. The king is throwing them in by what, Riley? Anger, fury, rage, and they're going to be thrown in by what? Faith. Walk by, not by. If they had stared at the king, what would they have been? Terrified. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego decided to walk by faith and not look at their present reality. I suggest you do the same. I wake up every morning, I'm happy. Why? Yesterday, we had a bad day. We had, some of us said it had been a bad day. We got, we got warned yesterday. What happened yesterday? Did y'all keep up with the news or y'all just say, hey, I'm going to be happy till it hits me? <laughs> There's a guy over, I don't know if y'all have heard of his name. He's called North Korea. Little old fat dude over there with a bad haircut, okay? He's got a bad haircut. He's mad at the world. 
Well, if I looked in a mirror and had that haircut, I'd be mad every morning too. So he got mad enough yesterday. He got mad enough yesterday that he launched, he launched a ballistic missile. And now, of course, there's been several like your pastor and other people for 20-something years have been telling everybody that he's going to get that capability. But there were some that thought it, we could compromise with the statue. We could compromise with the king. Now, there's a group we have, and this is what they politically believe. They believe if we just hold hands with evil and sing kumbaya, everybody's just going to get rainbows and unicorns, and the world's going to be one great melting pot of happiness. I wish some people would at least be somewhat intellectual. Where in history has that ever happened? Since recorded history, maybe it was before we recorded history that it happened. The only place I know that it happened was when we were naked in a garden. And it didn't take long until we had a drive-by. That's the first drive-by, remember? Cain iced Abel. They weren't in Chicago. They were in the Garden of Eden. So sin's around everywhere. Isn't it amazing? Walk by faith. Seven times hotter. Seven times hotter. I mean, it still blows me away. Let me show you what faith does. Faith cools the flames of a false god. Faith cools the flames of a false god. What do you and I need to be? Coolant to an angry world. We're approaching the Advent season. This Sunday, you're going to hear about hope. Who should we be? We're the hope people, man. Don't run around with your head down. Run around with your head up. Where are you going? Well, they develop a ballistic missile, and guess what it's capable of doing now? And it can hit Kentucky. It used to just be California and Washington. So we were all kind of like, well, we'll still be here. Come on, that's the way we think in Kentucky. Come on, y'all know I'm the tree. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Well, we'll run down there to Mammoth Cave and hide out, and then after it's all over, we'll come back out, and we'll be all right. Sorry, Al, it's the way we think down here. <laughs> you know, people go like this to us sometimes. Well, you know, global warming could wipe out California. And we go, and? Yeah, what's, this? what's this? Why do we think we can control all these things? So somebody asked me yesterday, they said, are you nervous with no correct core? I said, no, I don't follow young gum jong. I, that, that doesn't bother me because I know Jesus the Christ. And Jesus the Christ is the Lord of all things. He's the Lord of all people. He's got the world in control because he is the God of all things. And he loves all people. And our security will never be found in a nation. It is found in a cross and through the power of the resurrection. That's where it resists. That's where it resides. Check it out. Now, it's amazing, he heats it so hot, and then he binds the guys up. I never could figure this out. He binds them. Look, look at verse 21. Then these men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and other garments, and they were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Why do you have to tie people up that you're going to cook? Huh? It was Thanksgiving. I was getting ready for this sermon. You know, I'm thinking about this sermon. When Elizabeth and I were working on a turkey, and here she came out, and she tied the legs of the turkey together. I thought, she's done Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with that turkey. <laughs> I said, honey, them legs are going to cook whether you tie them together. But she wanted the turkey to look nice, right? I guess King Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to come out looking nice. I don't know. Hold on, once again, why do you bind a group of guys that you're convinced that you can kill? He's scared. You know, I wish that we were a church with enough faith that we would make the world think. But the church in America at this moment of time, now she's not this, but this is the way we practice. What is this? Some of y'all quit the first moment you get a pinch. Pastor Steve, I got to get out of that ministry. I'm uncomfortable. Well, God, I'm glad Jesus wasn't you. I bet he's a little uncomfortable while he's whipping his back, don't you? I bet he really didn't feel good on the day that he provided our salvation, don't you? 
I'm glad Jesus didn't bail out when it got uncomfortable. Aren't you, Michael? I'm glad he stayed with it till it was finished. What if we stayed with it till it was finished? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, guess what they're going to do? They're going to stay with it to his finish. And here's what the king said. What God can save you from the fire? You know what they said? The God who is above all gods. They said, King, whether we live or whether we die, we will not serve your gods you start standing like that and guess what you'll start living like Jesus well he throws them in the fire and guess what happens he kills his own men and then he arises and then verse 24 King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste he's kind of hasty fellow have you noticed that if y'all read on in Daniel, bad things happen to him eventually. He loses his everlasting mind. Here's what I'm telling y'all. Quit worrying about what happens to leaders. God take care of them. God take care of them. I always tell people that get worried about your pastors and they'll go, well, we don't know about my pastor. I said, God does. Said, well, he's doing a lot of crazy things. I said, God take him out. I've read the book. God of what? He'll put you in. We like that part, but guess what else he'll do? He'll take you out, kind of like a coach. Coach will put you in, but what else will a coach do, Dwayne? He'll take you out. When we get taken out, what do we do? I used to take kids out, and they go, why are you taking me out of the game? I said, most likely reason, because you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> I've never taken anybody out of the game because they were just doing a wonderful job. Well, I'll take it back. I had to take Blake out of the game one time because we were beating this poor little old team so bad. This wasn't at Warren Central. This was when we was in Pee Wee, and we were demoralizing them. I mean, it was fixing to get into not, we fixing to heat the furnace up on them. You know what I mean? So I had to pull Blake out. But then that night I had to say, Blake, I didn't pull you out because you wasn't doing a good job. I pulled you out because we couldn't do that to those people. We're Christian. We was fixing to get evil, okay? Check this out. He answered, did we not cast three men into the fire? <laughs> they answered, that's true, O king. He answered and said, but I see a fourth man unbound walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the white. Now, what do we know him to be? Who's speaking there? Helen, who's speaking there? King Nebuchadnezzar, right? He says he looks like the son of the gods, plural, because King Nebuchadnezzar doesn't know the God. You know who that was in that furnace? Jesus. Who? Huh? Some of y'all saying, well, Jesus wasn't born yet. You're right. Didn't say he couldn't come direct. If you go read the Gospel of John, Jesus always been. We're coming up on Advent. What we celebrate Advent is that Jesus was born. Not that Jesus was created, but that Jesus was born. He was revealed unto us through flesh. He's always been. Sam, that'd be a pretty cool thing to happen to you, wouldn't it? All of a sudden, they throw you in the fire. And next thing you know, Jesus has got you. And he says, come on, we're going to walk around in here for a minute, boys. Jesus, how come we ain't burning up? Because I'm a son of God. And he who created the fire can walk through it. And he who put every molecule in existence and understands every chemical and physical reaction, he who created the atom and all the things and particles that are even smaller than that that I don't know about, like the quantum, guess what? I am the God over all of those things so we can walk through the fire. Well, they get out of the fire, and guess what? Nebuchadnezzar was a little bewildered. So he decided to join in. The hair of their head was not singed. Their cloaks were not harmed. And no smell of fire came upon them. That is unimaginable to me. Y'all know what fire smells like? It is nasty. How many of y'all have ever singed your hair? I told y'all Sunday, Elizabeth did that. We said one of them big, big uh, green egg grills. We had to heat it up. You know, going to do the big sear on the steak. And Elizabeth opened that lid up. I mean, it blew her eyebrows right off. She came in. She was bald, just bald, just faced. Looked like a Mr. Potato Head without the eyebrows. And she stunk. 
I said, honey, you smell bad. Now, a few years later, she got me back. She said, you smell real bad. I did. Smell of fire. But I'm going to show you something. You know the reason they didn't have the smell of fire on them? Because they would not submit to the ways of the world. And so since they stood from God, God even protected them from the smell of evil. See, when they were thrown into that fire, follow me, they were not thrown in there accidentally. They were thrown in there intentionally. And when they were thrown in there, Pete, guess what God said? Gotcha. And it's a lesson we better embrace. Because guess what, big Al? When we stand, God stands taller. When we resist, God resists harder. When we submit, God always comes through. Resist the devil and he will. That's either true or not. How many of y'all have ever found out if you resist it, it goes away? What does temptation do? When temptation comes, what are we supposed to do? Get our mind off of it. What did Joseph do when old Potiphar's wife struck up that Marvin Gaye in that little house? Huh? What? What? what huh? She did. She's playing that song. I guarantee it was written before Marvin got a hold of it. She said, let's get it on. And Joseph said, let's get gone. <laughs> he resisted. And he said, yeah, Pastor Steve, but he still got thrown in jail. Yeah, you're right. He got thrown in jail so he could become the leader of all of Egypt, second in command. Because when God's got you, it will work out in the end every time. <laughs> Amen? Well, let's stand on that because uh, God wants to work it out for some of you tonight. Driver, thanks for leading tonight, man. Thanks for coming all the way back from Nashville and sacrificing. Hey, this guy travels all the way back from Nashville, Tennessee. I know that isn't a long way, but it's a long way the way they keep his roads tore up. He's at Belmont University, comes back to lead us in worship. Can y'all just thank him tonight for doing that? I mean, thank, thanks for standing up. So guess what? Tonight, why don't you do this, Lord? Now, you need to bow down so you can stand up. Everybody follow me? Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I believe you died on the cross and you've risen from the grave. And then Jesus says, you are forgiven, my son. You are forgiven, my daughter. Now stand up and walk toward heaven because that's where I got you. Do you realize that can happen to anybody tonight? Some of you tonight need to be as brave as my buddy Dalton. Ten years old, right, Dalton? Do you realize in ten more years you'll be 20? you have a mustache then. What do you think about that? Crazy. You have to shave your ears. What do you think about that? Crazy stuff goes on. Ten years from now, that's quick. Yeah. So embrace it. Live it. You know what Dalton did? He came out at Baptist. He had enough guts to come up here and say, you know what? I want to be obedient to God. Tanner tonight, we saw three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're probably young guys like you, you know, and they graduated from university, and they stood up, and what did God do? He delivered. Lord Jesus, come into my life, forgive me my sins. Guess what God does? delivers maybe tonight you've been reminded that you are more than you thought you were you're just not a church member you're a child of the most high god don't just act like it be it is that cool because you can we need isn't it now right caesar yes, sir. don't matter where you're from does it matters where you're going let's pray lord those that need to be saved tonight just bring them down and let them accept you those that have been saved and want to be baptized, Lord, let them come and say, I need to be baptized. Those of us that just need to come and pray to be encouraged by the power of the Holy Spirit, let that be done tonight. Lord, as, as we got finals week coming up here at the university, Lord, may we stand strong and may we believe what you put in us and, and just live it out. Lord, may we stand up to a nation that wants to walk away from you. May we be those in the nation that walk to you and walk with you and walk stood high toward heaven we just ask this in the name of jesus amen church altars open it's it's jesus time with you nobody can make you come up here we encourage you to come and be obedient so just let the lord have his way in your life right now thank you guys
come and love Jesus and we'll, we'll get out of here.